Welcome everybody to our 35th Facebook Live show here at Hot Shot Secret. Kyle Fisher, Director of Marketing. Kevin Adams, VPRD. Yep, we got Kevin back again. Yeah. Uh, Chris is on the road uh, this week. Uh, he's down at Matt's along yep. with uh, Don and Eric. Yep. Uh, Mid America Trucking Show. So we're pulling the load. It's the last show of March, which is good because eh, a little ugly today, but spring is. It's getting warmer. It's getting here. Yep. So as every, as every week, uh, we'll be answering your questions, giving away some free product. It's Free Product Friday. Uh, make sure you post your comments, questions below. Uh, like and share the video. Got some cool stuff today. Uh, a little special thing we're going to lead off with. Uh, what are we going to be doing in today's video? Uh, today's video, we're going to be talking about diesel engine oils. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> last, last week, we planned to get to that, but there were so many good questions. We just kept on going. This has kind of been like three weeks in the making. Like, yeah. like I guess a couple weeks ago, we did... Uh, the oil analysis and got mm -hmm. into that a little deeply, which leads into the oils. And then last week we were going to talk about the oils, but we had so many questions. We never, they were oil related, so we mm -hmm. had a lot of good oil talk. Yeah. So thanks for all the questions last week. It may happen again this week, we don't know. In the meantime, we're going to try to dive into the oils a little bit and talk about them. So if you have oil questions, it's a great day to post them. And as always, we'll answer questions on, you know, any of the products or any. Kevin's here from R&D, so it's also a great time to get those really technical uh, lubrication questions out there. We're happy to answer them. Yep. We're going to be recapping what goes, what's going on here at Hot Shot Secret. Um, and I th we have a really cool special we're going to lead off the show with. Before we get into our normal routine, hmm. uh, I think we mentioned recently we've partnered up with USMC Racing, which is... Uh, a great military group, uh, Uncle Sam's Misguided Children's Racing. And Brian Check there, uh, we just partnered up with him. We are supplying our adrenaline line of, of racing fluids to a really cool project car. They, they, they've got the, they run it in the 24 hours of lemons, not Le Mans, 24 hours of lemons. And it's, uh, it's a really cool car. These are a great group of guys. The Racing genres for the average racer to find a car, throw a roll cage in it, go out there and try to do some endurance racing with it. Yeah. And what Brian's done with this group is really open it up to the military, to active, uh, active duty and veterans. Uh, they, can, they, have a, they have a website page, uh, you, our, our Facebook page, USMC Racing LLC, I believe it is. Correct? I think Levi's probably showing you. And they do a lot of, uh, uh, they encourage other, other veterans to come out and join them. Uh, you can... You could talk to them how to get set up to actually get some time in the race car. As they say, you know, there's a lot of, uh, it allows these guys to, to let loose, as he says, and as they're readjusting back to civilian life here, and it's a good adrenaline rush for these guys. So it's a really That's cool program. Yeah. One, of the, one of the cool things that we just got on board recently, they are racing tomorrow. So hmm. it kicks off tomorrow, and I know I'm going to butcher this, but it's the can't get by you 24 hours of lim lemons. It's down at NOLA Motorsports Park in Avondale, Louisiana. It's Saturday and Sunday this weekend, uh, both days. So if you're down there in Louisiana, stop by, support these guys, watch the racing. If you're a veteran, uh, get in touch with, with Brian. He'll let you know how you can kind of join the team and, and, and get, some, get some racing in. But this is going to be, we'll see how, how good we are on the technical side of things because uh, Levi here has, has got to set up. They uh, just produced, uh, and shout out to Trident Productions, they just put together a really cool video okay. that they, they, they shared with us before they put it out. We got a world premiere. Nice. We are going to premiere the video, and I think it's great. It, it's, uh, I think you're going to love it. Uh, look, without further ado, if we can actually pull it off and, and show a video, Levi, go ahead and uh, let it roll.
<laughs> we pulled over world premiere. <laughs> Great video. Shout out to uh, Trident Productions for putting that together. Uh, last minute, we just got it in today. Yeah. We're going to put it up on our YouTube page on our social media um, and help share that so get a little excitement out for what these guys are doing. It's a, it, it's just a really cool thing. I love the video. It just it shows you how, how fun the, these military guys yeah. are pretty crazy too. Yeah. So uh, really cool video. We're, we're happy to support them. So remember, if you're down in the Louisiana area, go out and support these guys. They're going to be at uh, NOLA Motorsports Park in Avondale, Louisiana. Saturday and Sunday this weekend. So, uh, good luck, guys. If you're watching, uh, we're supporting you. Go kick some butt out there and and make us proud. We're, we're, we thank you guys for all you guys do. So, thanks. All right. So after pulling off our first live video, <laughs> I'm surprised that worked. Shout out to Levi for pulling yeah, it off. Good job, Levi. Good job, Levi. So okay. So what's going on on the web? Uh, looks like on the web. Our special is we're giving away a free T-shirt with an order of seventy-five dollars. Free T-shirt. Yeah. Wow. So I think they just put their uh, size in the comments there, and we'll ship them out a T-shirt. Yep. Yep. And we we now have some new T-shirts online. You know, we've we've had some of the new designs at the events, and now they're finally available on the web. Yep. So go check them out. I think they're selling pretty good too. People yeah. like our apparel all of a sudden. So yeah. thanks to our graphic designers, Jen and Karen, to do such a good job on that. I was actually. Uh, uh, down at Firepunk today and dropped them off some new gear, so um, they like that too. So let's give a shout out. We always like to recognize some of our new dealers that have come on board. Uh, new Hot Shots dealers. We got RTR Rogers Truck Repair in Fenton, Missouri. Triangle Diesel in Kankakee, Illinois. Jamaica Turbo Repair Services in Kingston, Jamaica. I'll go check that shop out if we ever need a, a road visit. Uh, Lily International in Williamston, North Carolina. Ben's Truck Repair in Red, Buff, Red Bluff, California. R and R Diesel in Echo, Minnesota, and Lee's Diesel in Bali, North Carolina. So thanks to uh, all of our new independent dealers that came on board. We appreciate it. Uh, welcome to the Hot Shots family. We love to see our product get out there to you know more people. And, and really, our independent dealers are kind of our bread and butter. These are really yeah, our really influencers. Our they really know the product and, and, and really can speak to their customers about you know getting a good product in their hands. So thanks to all the guys coming on board. I mean, that's big range there. Missouri, Illinois, Jamaica, North Carolina, Cali, Minnesota, <laughs> North Carolina. Kind of got it covered there. And we got some TV coming up. Let's see. This weekend on Sunday on Carfix at 11 a.m., we got a break room on there talking about our DWAG as we get here towards the end of the season for the last cold states out there. Luckily, we're pretty much past that here. Yeah. But our diesel winter anti-gel is going to be talked about on there. And then uh, on Monday at 9 a.m., we are going to be on Car Fix uh, talking about our FR3, our friction reducer. So tune into those. They're on Motor Trend, formerly Velocity, uh, now called Motor Trend. So tune into those and check that out. What else have we got going on in the news? Uh, just go to our website and check out our new blog. Uh, the blog is How Do I Know to Change Oil Brands. And uh, a big thanks to, to David at uh, David Overhold at Pokey's Performance and Repair. Good timing for that. We're talking about oils today. Yeah, Montezuma, Georgia. Mm -hmm. He's uh, contributed to the blogs. Yeah, we and, appreciate that. Yeah. We like It's nice that we have a lot of this. Like I said, our independent dealers really help out like that. And uh, it's a good read. I just read it. Brian Bailey, when, you know, our partner with Martin and Company, has been doing, writing these up, doing a really good job on them. Good timing today is. You might want to read up on that because we're going to dig into the article. We, we leave them very educational. So it's, you know, how do I know to change oil brands? But here we're going to tell you about maybe why you should change to our oil brand. Yeah. But it's a great educational article, so read up on that. What else we got going on in R&D this week? Yeah, in R&D, uh, we had mentioned last week that we're updating some of our web content. You know, we're, we're in the R&D department, we're always testing either ourselves or sending out products to the lab trying to continuously improve them so that, that uh, information doesn't always get onto the website sometimes we just file it away and move on to something else so right as the R&D department we're going through each and every product now that we're updating the website and seeing hey what what more scientific content can we put out there just a to lot kinda, of people are looking for it yeah give them the behind the scenes of what we're looking at when we make these decisions on additives and and uh, and performance of what we do. We're always double checking and mm -hmm. And we um, like to be testing. an open book. We like to put that stuff out there. Yeah. Let people 
learn more, uh, answer questions. Um, a lot of it can, you know, we, we try to do here, but obviously if we get the questions here, it's people are looking for that info. So uh, the new website's coming soon. Uh, the whole company's working really hard on it. I know Levi and Carmen are working their butts off on it. So uh, like two weeks away, <laughs> a little bit longer, a little longer <laughs> than that. But uh, uh, it should be coming very soon. It's going to be uh, a really big change for us on, uh, on on the digital side of things. I think I think our customers are going to be really happy with what they see. Yeah, it's really uh, it's really customer oriented and, and and getting some of our info out there. So we're we're looking forward to it. So stay tuned. That's coming. <clears throat> Uh, anything else in R&D? That's pretty much it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much <laughs> trying to read what you had here. That's, I don't have anything it. else written. <laughs> I'm just putting you on the spot. What yeah. Are you yeah, we're all hands on deck getting this, this information together. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Yeah, that's... All right. And, uh, well, I will say, I know you've worked with a couple of our race teams uh, this week, and, and we've been doing some formulation changes and on some oils on getting a little bit more out of these uh, really high-end trucks that are going to be surprising some people here soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which kind of leads into our oils, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, some, sometimes we get the question, you know, people that have known us for a long time know that we're, we're science-based and we, we do a lot of R&D. And they see us do these events and they wonder, hey, are you, are you losing your identity or, you hmm. know, what's, what's the thought behind that? Well, it's actually a natural progression. You know, our, the, the, the work that we're doing in performance is actually the fun side of science. Hmm. It, uh, it gives us a chance to take our products, test them in the highest performing vehicles that are out there, learn from that. You know, these racers are really great to work with. They're always trying to push the envelope, experimenting with everything, so they're, they're really good in giving us feedback on how the po products are performing. And it really expedites our R&D process, especially for, you know, when we're, we're looking at race oils and then, you know, offshoots of the race oils that we make available to the average guy, like, you know, like our, uh, the Outlaw oil. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a good example. It's, yep. it's really our race oil with a TBN package in it for everyday driving, so. Just spoiled it for later now when we get into well, it. That was just a little teaser. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, that's that, that is that is true, and and thanks to all the race teams out there that that, that help us out. Like we, like we say, we, we don't really consider ourselves sponsors of these guys. Mm -hmm. We really are partners with them, and I, I know a lot of companies other look at it differently. But uh, the, the amount of R and D we get out of it, and and validation of our products, I mean, is priceless to us. So we we really are are stretching the limits with the the testing we're doing, but that's going right back into the same science that's on the bottles of FR three at your truck stop shelf there. And like we always say, we don't have two different levels of products here. Right. We formulate as far as we possibly can, as far as the science will take us, and then that's the product we make available to everybody out there. So you can, you can know that the same, you wanna buy this bottle of, of oil right here, it's the, same, it's the same oil that's going in Firepunk Diesel's S10, you know, that, that, that's breaking records. So it's the exact same oil, there's no difference. We may have formulated it with them, but uh, we didn't change it once we get it, you know, perfect. Right. So. Thanks to all our race teams out there. Yeah. Uh, let's see, in marketing, and, and speaking of that too, it's, it's, it's April just around the corner, and April means race season is upon us. So mm -hmm. we're looking forward to that. I know uh, the Rudy's opener is going to be here at the end of the month of April, uh, April 26th, 27th. Ultimate call-out challenge is the week after that. And then around the corner, it's not too early to start promoting, but May 31st, June 1st, Outlaw Diesel is finally coming to Ohio. <laughs> so we're really excited about that. It's uh, Firepunk Diesel picked up the events, the Outlaw Diesel Revenge at Kill Care Raceway. The Saturday night finale fueled by Hot Shot Secret is going to be something you're not going to believe. It's going to, we got some really cool stuff planned. So for all of our local folks, um, nationally, everybody that knows us through the race circuit and stuff usually comes to all these events anyway. So welcome to everybody that's coming to Ohio. <laughs> For all of our local Ohio people, this gets them a good opportunity to kind of see what these diesel, you know, races can, you know, what these guys are really doing nowadays. So yeah, and this this is a good one if you've never gone to a diesel event, you can bring the whole family. The the Saturday night that we're sponsoring, there's going to be a lot of a lot of stuff for family it is. type this is, activities. It's completely family oriented both days really, mm -hmm. and there's a lot going on. It's family friendly. Bring the kids. Right. It's it's going to be a great time. As we get closer, we're going to start rolling out a little bit more of the stuff planned. But it's it's going to be an awesome weekend. So May thirty first, June first, save the date for the next eight weeks before we get there. We're going to keep promoting it and hope to see a lot of people out there. 
Uh, also going on marketing, like I said, we got the Mid-America Trucking Show going on right now. It's the world's largest trucking show. Uh, Chris himself is down there. Uh, I talked to them earlier. They're really busy. The booths are really busy. They're in booth 60085. 60085. So uh, Diesel Don's down there from the, our account executive. Eric's down there from marketing. Uh, they're, you know, and it's just one of the cool shows. I know, I know uh, Chris went on, did uh, an interview with Steve Summers on WLW Live at the show yesterday. I think yeah. that's airing ten, yesterday and tonight as, as well. So if you're down there in Louisville, Kentucky, swing by the Matt Show, stop by the Hot Shots booth. They got some cool uh, show specials going on too for, yeah. for the truckers. So uh, and, and grab those while you can. It's a really good deal, but I can't tell you because you got to be there for it. So, and what else? We got the we're finishing up details on the first ever digital edition of our LSI Innovations magazine. Some of the people that have been with us for a while know that we've been publishing an LSI Innovations magazine, kind of like what we do here. It's kind of a, a quarterly magazine that we put out uh, that kind of tells what's been going on in the, the, the LSI world and uh, really kind of features some, some great content you know, that we do here and that we try to kind of put out, but it's in a published form. Well, we're switching to digital. So it's, uh, we're going to be releasing the first digital edition next week. So stay tuned for that. We're just finishing putting the final details, and we'll uh, we'll kind of we'll kind of promote a little bit more next week once it's published. So look out for that. And let's go on warehouse and shipping. Yeah, it's like musical chairs out there. Yeah, they are, I don't know. I didn't know what they were doing, but apparently they're rearranging all the products and shelving for for better efficiency. And yeah, about a month ago, it looked like we were starting to run out of space. Yeah, <laughs> but when we, when we looked all around, when we first moved into this building, we we had plenty of space, so we we laid it out fairly efficiently, but there's there, there's opportunities for improvement. Over time, now. you put something there, yeah, you put exactly. something there. So that's what they're working on, trying to free up more space. Yeah, and it's quite a job. Yeah, it's quite a job. So I know they've been working hard. Shout out to the warehouse. So uh, post your questions below, and we will get to those. We'll see if we have any before we dive into product education for the day. All right. Bearded Medic is in there. Josh Turner said that was awesome. Nice video, Bearded Medic. Yeah, we thought it was a great video. Thanks. Uh, that's that was Trident Productions that, that did that video for USMC Racing. Oh, there they are. USMC Racing says, heck yeah, thank you guys so much. Hey, thank you guys. We're, we're, we're happy to support you. Go kick some butt this weekend. Uh, really happy to be on board with you. All right, Eric, Kev, we got one right out of the gate. Bearded yeah. Medic wants to know, which oil should he use for his 2000 F-250? It's got 220,000 miles on it. Yeah, the, the oil... Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the dramatic pause. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the oil would, would recommend, if you're not running in a, a, uh, a bypass filter, would recommend our, our synthetic. Uh, right now we have just one viscosity of synthetic, but we're uh, in about two months. We're going to add add the uh, the second viscosity. So we, we are. Yeah, we'll have a we'll have a 1540 and a 540. Breaking news. Yes, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what we'd recommend. If you're on an extended drain interval, uh, you'll definitely get the value out of the blue diamond, but it would be overkill if you if you don't have a <laughs> bypass filter. Kind of the question. Uh, uh, Chris and I were fielding last week a few times about what kind of oil should you use. Uh, like Chris said, if you're the type of person that's rotating a car every two years, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, have the dealership change your oil, you move on with life type of thing. Mm -hmm. If you've got a vehicle you're trying to keep for a long time, or a very high-end expensive vehicle, or something that you're putting a extreme loads on, you know, racing, towing, working, that type of thing, mm -hmm. these are the type of guys that we're going to want to look into a higher-end oil, like a Blue Diamond, PAO, that we'll get into. But really with that, that ties into having the bypass filter and so forth. So, And we've got it right down the line, which we'll cover. So um, the safe bet is always running with the full synthetic. If you're trying to do longer intervals, full loads, then we'll step you up to the blue diamond and we'll dive into why that would be. Uh, following that, we have... <laughs> Evan Tracy says, what hot shot cigarette product is best in a bowl of nuts and bolts? I don't know. I think you need to ask USMC <laughs> Racing. I think it was gear oil they poured in that. If I saw the bottle oh, right, yeah. so uh, we do not recommend that at home. But the uh, these uh, 
These Marine guys are pretty crazy, so he said all of it. <laughs> uh, Josh Turner says, the racing synthetic gear oil, is it okay to run in a, clot, in a clutch posy unit? Ooh, that was a good question. Oh, it, it is. We, uh, many of good our, question. Many, many of our racers uh, run that same setup, so yes. Yes? That would be fine. All right, Josh, there's your answer. James Bruce, James. welcome back. Chris isn't here for your uh, <laughs> motto, your, what is it? Lube it right day and night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he might yeah, be watching down there from uh, from the show. So James says, yep, you must not have fat guy size. My box of unicorn lubes didn't have my signed fat guy size shirt. I'm bummed out. Oh, wait, I must still be banned. James, you're not banned. And we are fat guy friendly here. I'm sure we got your size. So uh, <laughs> we'll make sure you get taken care of. Uh, let's see, Beard Mix said he's got no bypass filter. So without the bypass filter, I would I would say that your synthetic is probably your best go. Yeah, that would be our Green Diamond uh, Fleet uh, 5W40. Yep. Soon to come a 15W40 in that as well. It's going to be a hauler, he says. Uh, hey, Rannis, are you watching? Cody Hopkins, what's up? David Baker, how's it going? So let's jump into some product education. Um, let me do a quick overview, and then you want to you dig in where you want to go. How about right. that? That'll work. I'm going to start right here in our Green Diamond Fleet Oils, and I have some news on this one too. So we we offer a Green Diamond 15W40. It is what we call a semi-synthetic. It's a Group Two, Group Three blend. So uh, you know, Group Twos are generally your conventional oils. Group Threes are your synthetic oils, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know we got a Group Four PAO. So this is a group two, group th three blend, comes in a 1540. Our other green diamond is a full synthetic. Uh, it's a 5W40. Now what I just found out oh, is that that's not just a group three, but we actually have some group four PAO blended into it. That is true. You know, so this is one heck of a synthetic oil. It, it is above your standard synthetic oil on the shelf. Most synthetic oils you see out there, anything that says synthetic, probably has some group three in it. They even can blend other stuff you know, into it mm -hmm. and they have the right to call it synthetic still. This is just a fully group three with some group four in it as well. So that is about as strong as synthetic oils you can get. And then we will jump over to our line of blue diamond oils. And as you know, these are kind of our top of the line. These are full group four PAO, poly alpha olefins. Mm, um, thank you. <laughs> uh, I've been working on it. Yeah. And so uh, Kevin will go in a little dive on that a little bit deeper. These are what we're using with our, our long haulers, people looking to extend the, their drain intervals. If you're running a bypass filter to keep that oil clean, uh, these PAOs are just, they're unshearable. They're just really indestructive oil, really strong stuff that they can pretty much last forever if you can keep it clean. And at worst, you might need to bump up your TBN level a little bit on it. But they're really for the long haul. Um, and then we've got some unique products in there. We've got what we call our our black diamond oil mm -hmm. and this is a unique product from from a standpoint that it's a it's a high zinc oil so it's basically our racing oil yeah. it has a very high, high level of zinc on it for the protection but we give it a really robust uh, TBN package in it for a lot of those guys out there that are kind of in the the, the street strip kind of kind of modes so guys that are heavy duty t hauling hauling yeah. absolutely that it's not DPF friendly this is offered use only mm. uh, because of all the high zinc package that's really going to beat up your, your DPF or your catalytic converters. But it's a way for the guys that really want a high-end race oil, high-end performance oil uh, that also, you know, have it out on the road and it isn't just a trailer queen race car. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we, we put a lot of extra TBN boost in it to, to sustain that road driving as well. And then finally, we only got one of them out here, but obviously our adrenaline racing oil. we got a full line of racing oil that comes in a... 520, uh, 15, or 1030, 1540, uh, 2050, and we got an alcohol 60 weight too. So everything from 20 to 60 weight, we got it covered under the adrenaline racing line of oils. So that's kind of the spread. Uh, you want to dive in and maybe tell the difference between a semi-synthetic, a full synthetic, and a PAO. Let's yeah. start there. Yeah, I, I will do that. So. I was thinking before we we did this live feed, you know, what what kind of questions do people people want to know? You know, if you look at YouTube videos, 
there's a lot of misconceptions actually about engine oil and how the different grades vary, how the weights vary, you know, what that actually means. So, you know, basically engine oil is produced from a base oil that comes from crude. Right. It's, it's a mineral oil. Because it comes from crude, it has a lot of impurities in it. One of those impurities is wax. You know, just like wax will gel up in the wintertime in diesel fuel, it also makes your oil thick in the wintertime. I don't know if you've ever seen some of those YouTube videos where they freeze synthetic oil versus conventional oil. Right. The conventional oil is barely pouring out of the bottle and the synthetic's still flowing nicely at, you know, minus 30. Is so four point? It, it, yeah, te <laughs> technically, yeah, yeah. Uh, most of the time they don't completely freeze up, but you're getting very close to the freezing temperature. And it, again, it's because of the waxes that start to come out of solution. So for that reason, that's why we start with a semi-synthetic. Uh, you know, for, for the longest time, we only had the PAO synthetic. And, you know, we found that it's a very good product. It's for people who have bypass filter, but it's a very, it's a very special group that would, that would run that. So we had a lot of people at the events and our customers come back to us and say, hey, you know, could you expand your line? It seemed like there was a lot of demand there. So we did some, did some R&D. Uh, we tried to find some some unique additive packages out there. You know, at the same time we were developing this oil line was when we were starting to break new ground with the FR3. You know, we mm -hmm. had tried the FR3 in a lot of different engine oils, extended the performance even in the best oils, of Brad Penn, you know, VR1, driven racing oil, Mobile One synthetic. So, you know, we knew we had something there with, with if we could find a robust additive package and then add the FR3 on top of it, we thought we'd have something really outstanding. So that's kind of the background with that and why we start with the semi-synthetic. And to lead into that too, that's what we often tell people that are you know dabbling in this, trying to figure this out. Uh, we find that a lot of people are very oil loyal. Yeah. And so uh -huh. one thing I always tell people is if you like your oil, keep your oil. Mm -hmm. Try some FR3 in it first because that's how we started our research, really just researching the FR3. We didn't have our own oil, yeah. so we had to research it in other people's oil. And after seeing all the gains that we were getting in every oil out there, mm -hmm. that's what kind of sparked what you said. Well, maybe we can put together an additive package that can be more robust yeah. than that. There's obviously something left on the table with these other oils, and that opens up our, our product line for something like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so now now we have a full line from, from semi-synthetic to group four synthetic. So. So the difference, the, uh, whenever you're talking about mineral oils, they have the wax in, so they, they flow at, or they, they have more of a resistance to flow. Um, that leads me into a question that we get a lot. You know, what does the first number mean in, in an engine oil rating? Uh, you know, if it's, a, if it's a 1540 versus a 040, you know, some people would look at that 040 and say, well, I don't know about running 040 oil in my, in my truck. What that is actually saying to you is the first number, because it has a W after it, what it's trying to communicate is that's the winter viscosity of the oil. And those, those ratings are based on, on a mineral oil. So whenever you're formulating an engine oil, you want it to flow well in cold weather, um, but then protect in, in you know, the, the brutal environment in your engine. So what people put in the oil as part of their formula is a viscosity modifier. Right. If you were to take a viscosity modifier additive, you actually could set it on the table as a block of plastic. You know, we go to the STLE show every year and there's, there's vendors that have these blocks sitting out. Okay. And, and it's surprising that, that you actually can dissolve a chunk of plastic in, in oil. Well, what that's actually doing, it's, it's a heat activated polymer. So when when that chemical is in there, you could take a, if it's a 15W40, you could start with a 15 weight oil and add viscosity modifier in it and make it act like a 40 weight oil. Right. That gets you the cold weather flowing and the, and the, uh, the high temperature protection. So that's how all multiple viscosity <clears throat> oils are kind of built? Yes. If so they control if they're based, that variance? If, if they're based on a mineral oil, that's, they've used a chemical like a viscosity modifier to achieve that multi-grade. Gotcha. Multi the problem with that, especially in diesel applications, you know, some, some are extremely brutal on oil and these viscosity modifiers. You know, examples of a six liter Ford. 
um, what happens, mechanical shearing can happen to these polymers. And if, to, to kind of describe the action that happens, viscosity is the resistance to flow. Mm -hmm. So when the oil gets hot, the polymer expands and it causes the, the oil to be more resistant to flow. What happens is these arms can get sheared off and actually get mechanically broken. So technically, if you're running a 1540, that 40 rate weight could easily be sheared down to a 30 weight, a 20 weight, you know, even a 15 weight. So right. when you get your oil analysis back and you're surprised that it's, it's now a 20 weight, that may be an indication that your oil supplier has a weak additive package uh, or you know, they've used a lot of viscosity modif modifiers to achieve that. To get where it's at. To right. get where it's at. But that's what the five, that's what the W weight means at the beginning. Uh, if you so, so, so you're saying with the better, so you're saying not not all five W40s are the same. They can get they can get that variance uh, in different ways. So if they're not using a, a robust, strong enough additive package, it may be able to stretch that viscosity of 40, but it will shear out of grade a lot quicker. Yeah, that, that's right, and that's why we start with a semi-synthetic versus a, a regular mineral oil. Conventional, yeah. Yeah, conventional oil. Uh, we, we believe that a conventional oil doesn't really have a place in, in diesel applications because it can shear out of grade. Right. Um, not all applications are, are very, you know, extremely hard, but we, we want to supply the best product that we can, and uh, you know, we, we just don't offer the less than a semi. So. So our semi-synthetic is a blend between a group two and a group three synthetic. Our synthetic is, like Kyle had said, a group three with some group four to extend the performance characteristics. Um, that oil has very, very little viscosity modifiers in it to achieve, uh, to achieve the multi-grade. One thing when you get into synthetics, synthetics act like a multi-grade without a viscosity modifier. You know, the scaling system was based, uh, you know, many, many years ago based on mineral oil viscosities before synthetics were even, you know, widely commercially used. Hmm. So. I learned something new each time with you. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Kevin's here. I'm just making this stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> so, you post your questions. Kevin's here today. He's the one to answer those. So. Let me let me throw some questions up that I lined up for you. Mm -hmm. So, based on application, how do you recommend what the best oils are for someone? So, uh, what I lined up here is a daily driver, a semi truck, you know, tractor trailer, um, heavy load trucks, you know, hot shotters, work trucks, or like a street strip race daily driver. So, you know, we get the question. We've had a couple of Marty today, that type of thing. When you're making up those decisions on the recommendations, how mm -hmm. do you decide? Here's what I'm going to lean you towards, or here's what I'm going to lean you towards. Yeah, I'll tell you, one, one thing to look out for is, is first of all, the additive package that's used. Um, there is still some people using the CJ4 additive package. The, the most current one now is the CK4 additive package. And in that CK4 additive package, there's, there's a package on top of that that also not only meets the CK4, it meets the additional requirements of Ford. So at a minimum, whenever you're judging what oil to run in your truck, uh, you should you should look at the back of the label and make sure that it meets the CK4. It's not CK4, yeah. It's certainly yeah. an old recipe. Yeah, well. and the WSS4, you know, Ford spec. Right. Um, the CK4 is backwards compatible, so if you do have an older truck that calls for a CI4 or a CJ4, you're still in, in good shape. But, you know, we, we've talked and in other videos. And it's literally as easy as those letters, too. It goes the alphabet, yeah, they, I, they J, K. So the next one will be L. Yeah. Right now we're at K, C, K, 4. Yeah. So, so some of the innovations that, you know, people are continuously developing new science for additive packages. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of pressure to increase fuel economy through lubrication and increase the, uh, uh, the detergency in the packages. So... Mm -hmm. So what we found with this latest revision of oils is they're much more oxidation resistance. They they have better wear resistance when they're combined with a synthetic. Um, you know we, we see big fuel economy gains over the CJ4 package. Uh, you know some of the common tests uh, th that are used like the uh, like the scuffing test. There's there's less wear. You know there's on average, 30% less wear than a, than a CJ4 additive package. So, so the CK4, and, and actually our CK4 is on 
is you know the better additive package as far as wear protection goes. But I'm just saying, even in general, when you're choosing an oil, the CK4 is definitely what you should seek out. And, and we kind of touched on the last week too when we were uh, discussing the TBN booster because the TBN booster product, as you remember, like Chris was saying, this is a simple way to make the oil you got in there super robust. Yeah. And, and if you can see how thick this stuff is, it's pretty thick stuff. But this is basically a third FR3, mm. uh, third TBN boost, and another third is a CK4 package. Yeah. So it's imagine if you took if you took a, a bottle of, of motor oil and stripped all the base oil out of it. This is what you have left in a really good oil. Mm. This is all the potent, concentrated, good packages in in that gets added to a base oil. So it's just a unique way to kind of. Uh, uh, know what this product is. Best way to explain this product, I think, is just kind of like, it's, it's if we had the base oil, we had this, it makes this. Yeah. So exactly. it's a good product to add to your oil when you're kind of running on a long interval. Need to spike it back up, get it back up to to spec, and so forth. Looks like we got a couple questions. We'll dive back in in a minute here, Kev. But we, who was it? The. Uh, Oh, Ryan Geisford again says no bypass filter, deleted 6.7 power stroke, 127,000 miles. Can't make up my mind which oil I want to run. Which do you recommend? So, no bypass. Mm. He's over 100,000 miles um, and he's got a deleted power stroke. Hmm. So, it opens him up to quite a few. It does. I, I think I would still recommend the, the synthetic uh, Green Diamond for him. You know, if his truck was boosted, you know, if he was pushing more than than 500 horsepower, you know, I'd recommend the uh, the outlaw oil with mm -hmm. the additional zinc. But uh, yeah, if, if you're running below that level, uh, the synthetic uh, blue or green diamond is is a good choice. It's a good value, and it's it's a really high performing additive package. I concur. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say the same thing. I I, I think really we're there. Your difference is, uh, do you want that really high zinc package to protect the motor under, you yeah. know, extreme? So, if if Ryan, you got a lot of power behind that, we don't know. You might want to look at the uh, black diamond. Otherwise, you're going to be good with that green diamond, uh, full synthetic. David Baker says best products on the market. You better believe it, David. Thanks. David's uh, got a it's part of our sponsor race team there. That's had some cool pictures we've had online lately. Randy Jensen, love your products. Thanks, Randy. Mark Cal says, I have a 2015 Duramax with your bypass filter with 430,000 miles. Wow. I always use Rotella T6. I am an RV transporter with constant heavy loads. Is it safe to switch to Blue Diamond at this point? Hmm. Tee up for that. That's yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, you know, with, with any oil program where you're running an extended drain interval we'd always recommend you know using oil analysis to guide the way so so the good thing with you is you know when you come to the end of an oil change recommend doing an oil analysis on the on the t6 seeing where your wear metals are at confirming there's no fuel dilution antifreeze contamination from a cooler leaking and then when you run our oil you can see the difference in in performance based on you know where your baseline was at but right you should see a reduction in wear metals so, so Mark, if you if you decide to make the switch over to the Blue Diamond, uh, get one of the oil analysis kits while you do it. And if you already have, I did say he's got a he's got our bypass filter. If you get our bypass filter, it's really easy to get a sample out of that. We were kind of yeah. talking about demonstrating it earlier, but um, yeah, we'd love to get an example a, a, a sample of that T6 to give you a baseline of where you're at. Make the switch to Blue. We'll do another analysis afterwards and see what the game is. But you're definitely safe if that's the initial question. Josh McCarrick, our sponsored racer, can't wait to set the record this year with your oil. Go get it, brother. Yeah, thanks. We got your back. Mike Douglas. Wow, Mike, that is a, hmm. What is the science behind FR3? That is a, oh. I dare you to ask Chris <laughs> that question. Just make sure you get a couch and a comfy chair. He, he followed up with saying zinc question mark. Hmm. It's not zinc. Yeah. Hey, actually, yeah. Trey Sykes just chimed into Mike saying, "This, this, this science is nanotechnology." Yeah, there, there's actually there's actually three things th that uh, that are special or different about the FR3. Um, generally, when when people try to make high performance additives, th they'll add more Molly or more zinc. You know, some of the conventional additives 
that uh, you know, honestly, you can have too much zinc in your oil or yeah. too much moly in your oil, especially in diesel applications. Uh, moly at a certain point can start to become acidic and, and actually cause corrosion and damage to your engine, which is surprising. But the FR3, we don't have zinc, we don't have moly, we have carbon in there. And it's, it's a special additive, like, like Kyle had said, it's, it's a nanocarbon, which means that it's, it's a thousandth of a micron in size. And it's, it's, it has a proprietary process to prepare it to keep it in suspension. And we're the only ones that have that patent. Yeah, we're the, we're the only ones in the United States that, that do that. have access. And it will not fall out of uh, suspension or anything. You, that's part of the, what we're finding also is that's, that's helping out with the, the heat reduction too, because the carbon suspended in the oil yeah. is actually pulling the conductor, as a conductor yeah. of heat, so it can help pull the heat. So it's not just a friction reduction. Yeah, but actually it, the carbon in the oil. Exactly, it, it's a really good conductor. Thanks, Kevin. And and we found that it works synergistically with zinc. Uh, won't get into too much of a deep dive, uh, but there is. He's about to go real nerd on you. <laughs> <laughs> there's a science in general where you uh, esters cause more of an active level of zinc at the surface. So what we have done with this formula, we have a, because it's called FR3 because we have three patented uh, ingredients. One is a base oil that has a PAO and an ester together and uh, linked together chemically. And it has very unique performance. It, that base oil by itself without any additives has one of the best film strengths out there as far as base oils go. It's better than PAO, it's better than MPAO. So that is one of the core ingredients in our FR3. We also have a synthetic cleaner that what we found is it acts like a polarizing agent to bring more active ingredients to the surface. Hmm. So the base oil with the nano carbon and the, and the, uh, the synthetic uh, ester, those all work together to, to change the polarity at the surface and actually work with the base package. Uh, we, weren't sh we had done some wear tests at the beginning to see how we ranked compared to other people out there. You know, pretty much anybody on the shelf, some of our main competitors, you know, we, we indexed it. We, we saw that we had something better than anybody else based on the wear tests. Then we went and did testing with other people's engine oils and right. then found, like we had said earlier, we've extended the performance and it seems that the more zinc that's in the formula, the better the FR3 works. So, like you said, it's that synergy. And that's one of the unique things in turbology, to throw a big word out there, Yeah, is, is the synergy <laughs> of some of these chemicals. I mean, uh, you never know what you get when you mix two things together. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really interesting to see how, how you guys work to find new stuff like that. Uh, this guy named Levi out there that asked a question. Are you sharing this question? I see a unique little thing on there. What about FA4 oil? Hmm. We have not... I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, what, what he's talking about is the new, the new light viscosity diesel oils. They're called FA4. Oh, so kind of like with the, what we're working on with... Yeah, but it's, it's a 30-weight it's a oil. Oh. It's, it's a different additive package. And we have sites... We have our sights on that additive package. We're actually doing some testing right now with some other light viscosity oils to, to see where we maybe have some unique offerings. Uh, next year, I would ask, this is just an estimate, but maybe middle of next year we may be looking at the FA4 oils, but you know nothing for this year. Hmm. We have some other homework to do first. Yeah, the zero stuff. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, speaking of oils, how's, is a, uh, the, the car broken down yet, or no? It's, it's still running strong. We're uh, we've done our first oil analysis, and this is the zero W eight we've been testing. Like Chris has been testing on his daughter's car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, everything still looks fine. Uh, you know, Chris volunteered his his new Dodge to to do the first round of testing, and we we talked him into uh, letting us use a less expensive car <laughs> <laughs> to start with. But uh, Chris, so far, everything's going Chris pretty well. He's a wild man. Yes, he is. <laughs> All right, so Brent Hilliard says, so if we used our own oil in a power stroke instead of a green fleet oil 15W40, 
is it better to add FR3 or TBN? It's a non-deleted six liter. Good question. That is a good question. So it goes back to my, if you like your oil, keep your oil. Mm -hmm. um, what, should, what should we add? Uh, let me take a stab. I'll, yeah. give you, I'll give you the layman's version. You're good with the FR3 out of the gate on a new fresh oil change. FR3 is going to give you the, 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 the balance you want. Unless you're putting really junk oil in there that needs mm -hmm. a really strong uh, CK4 TBN boost out of the gate, uh, I don't think you need all that right right away. Now, maybe something as that, that oil starts to deplete, you can go with a TBN booster. But it certainly can benefit with, with FR3 right out of the gate, right out of new fresh oil. Yeah. So I guess depending on how good of, you didn't really say which oil you're using, but. Yeah, you know, it, it's not likely that a diesel engine oil would be junk as far as the, the TBN level. It's probably somewhere between a 7 and a 10. So, so, you, you're, so you're, you're probably good on the TBN out of the gate. Yeah, definitely. I, w I would say almost definitely you're good out of the gate. You know, we get oil analysis back from other people's engine oil and. Uh, you, you know, we don't. There's no people that come to mind off the top of my head that are you are know, so bad out of the bottle that you need TBN booster right exactly, away. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, 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 Brent, really, the recommendation is to to definitely FR3. I, I, we, I don't think we can find an oil that FR3 can't improve. Yeah, we haven't yet. Um, which, if you notice, on every single one of these bottles, as we mentioned, they all have FR3 in them. If you get an oil from us, the FR3 is already infused into it. So. It's there, ready to go. That's how much we believe in it and how much we know it's working in there. Uh, Mark Cal says, I do do analysis. Um, he was the guy that uh, had the Duramax with, with uh, 430,000 miles on it using the Rotella T6. So uh, if you're doing the analysis, again, to answer your question, it is safe to switch to the blue. Uh, mm -hmm. Share your analysis with us, your, your most recent one, mm -hmm. and uh, we can follow up after that. So good to hear, Mark. James Bruce replying to uh, Mike, who asked what the science behind FR3 was, said it's unicorn lube. It's magical, <laughs> which is true. We capture unicorns, we tie them down, we cut their horns off, and we get three drops of FR3 out of each unicorn horde. So that's why it's really tough to find. But, all right, James Bruce, uh-oh. <laughs> Kyle, just to let you know, Big Country sent unicorn lube to my brother George in Greece. And man, is he so excited. He has a diesel Jeep. Nice. I'm looking at those new diesel Jeeps. Really? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. And I think we mentioned last week where Chris has got a buddy out there in Greece that we've been, mm. we've been talking about getting some distribution out there. So he might be able to get some uh, distribution out there soon. Uh, Brent Hilliard said he was using T5, but might switch to Green Fleet. Good to hear, Brent. Keep us posted. Uh, Beard Max says he used the Rotella 1540 quick lube joint. <laughs> All right. Christopher Wenzel says, where are you at with the car oil? Hmm. This gets asked a lot. Yeah, it does. You want to tell, I'm assuming you mean gasoline oil. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, you, you go down that road. Maybe that's a good overall description question, too. We kind of touched on a little bit last week, but the difference between a gasoline motor oil and a diesel motor oil. Yeah. And why we don't go gasoline. We, uh, we will have a gasoline oil in the near future. Man, I, I can't I can't commit this is gonna kill you with all these new I products. I can't commit to when that time is gonna be. We've been looking we've been slowly working on this project actually for the last couple of years, but not really that hard. Which the zero W eight that <laughs> that Chris threw in his daughter's car is a gasoline vehicle. So. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh but uh there's a very high probability in in six months that we will have a, a car oil. Start the timer, Levi. Six months, he said. <laughs> okay, so, all right. Uh, all right, so uh, back to like our little lineup here before we get, we're getting close to the end here. So let's knock out a couple more of these, Kev. I know we had a, um, uh, a question about change intervals. And is there a recommended oil change intervals when using, you know, hot shot secret oil. Like, how do you measure it? Now, we know out of the gate, I know your answer is going to be we guide everything by oil analysis. Mm. Um, and oil analysis is going to tell you exactly how long you can go on your oil. Right. But rule of thumb, what do we usually tell people? Yeah, on the, uh, on the synthetic, we say two times the manufacturer's recommendation. So, you know, for example, you know, a, a six liter, Ford may say, 
for extreme heavy duty use, 7,500 miles, or if you're just a daily driver, it's 5,000 miles. So it'd be, you know, th two times the 7,500 or two times the 5,000. Right. You know, it depends what your manufacturer recommends. On the Blue Diamond, um, if you're running a bypass filter and analysis, you know, we would say three times, but like we had mentioned a few weeks ago, we have many customers going way past that, like mm -hmm. 100,000 miles. Uh, getting, you know, adding TBN, checking it, confirming it with oil analysis, uh, but but they're, you know, the oil's not wearing out. Gotcha. Uh, we'll get something that came in here. It says Trey Sykes is out there. Hey Trey. Hey. Uh, he says there are oils that have both CK4 and SM spec. Hmm. What's that? What's SM spec? Yeah, SM is the automotive spec. Um, oh. our, our oils actually don't meet that spec, and the reason why, when, when they first introduced the CK4 spec, Ford was not happy with the wear protection. Specifically, oils that have the VW 504-507 spec can be used in diesel and gasoline engines. Hmm. Okay. I bet it sucks then. Yeah. Trey, it can't be that good if it's going to be able to... Well, I mean, how are you going to get a, a diesel out of the package through a catalytic converter on a car without... Mm -hmm. So yeah, they that, have to have it toned down enough to that, make it car friendly. Yeah, it's totally a tray off. The uh, the CK4 by itself does meet some automotive specs, mm -hmm. but when you put the additional phosphorus in to meet the WSS Ford spec, that that puts too much additive in there to make it work for a car, and it's right. because the emission systems in cars are are less forgiving than. Which is why diesel oils are better oils than gasoline yeah. oils because they can put a better additive package in there. Yeah that the, uh, the gas can't handle. So, um, and Trey knows his VWs, that's for sure. But luckily Trey runs Hot Shot Secret Oil, <laughs> so, so we're good to go on that. Uh, Mark Cowell says, can this oil be used in a new engine right off the sales lot? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, if, if I was, my answer to that would be, we would not, we would not recommend you taking out the the OEM oil. Uh, the reason for that is a new oil in your truck has it's it's basically break-in oil when you're running your first oil change. Right. And we recommend with FR3 that you wait till your oil has been broken in before you use it. Uh, so so yeah the uh, put it. We've had this question a lot. I've heard yeah. you know I've heard Chris say Psh, drive it in. You're good. Uh, Basically, the FR3, we want your rings to seat really well. Yeah, they'll still seat, but it will take longer, you're, and we haven't tested you're that. It up so, too we much. so we don't, yeah. they, they want to be safe in how they, they recommend it. I get yeah. that. Uh, but what we've also found is that the way they break in these motors off manufacturers, you know, the, the production line now is different than it used to be. Mm -hmm. they're, they're pretty well broken in by the time they hit the lot. Yeah. So, yeah. so don't, I guess what he's saying is, don't go siphon out your oil or dump your oil like right away. Mm -hmm. But if you wait till that first, you, you know, each manufacturer, each vehicle has its own recommendation on a brand new car. You know, mm -hmm. don't go over 65 or 500 miles or something like that. Right. They're doing that to be safe on their end too, to make sure everything's broken in. We, we just advise the same thing. Let, right. Follow their instructions because each manufacturer has a different way to break in their own vehicles. And, uh, and so once you're right off the sales lot, follow the instructions. Once you've got through their braking procedure, you're safe to throw our oil in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chance says, I don't know what the secret is, but it works. <laughs> That's what we say. <laughs> the stuff works. So let's see. It's about wrap-up time here. So one more question I did see that I wanted to uh, point out was something we had. Um... Oh, the, oh, just the general question that we get. What sets Hot Shot Secret engine oils apart from the other brands? We've kind of touched on a little bit uh, about the base, about the additive package, the FR3. Uh, knowing what you know against the, the, the oils that are out there, because we're not as widely available as everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're, we're obviously not in it where we have a pr price point that's, uh, we're putting everything into these products. So if right. you had a diesel, diesel vehicle, why are you buying Hot Shot Secret? Yeah, they, we we put more additive package in the, than most people. You know, when we've done wear tests, you know, we've we've seen 
you know, 30 to 50 percent more wear reduction. Uh, we use a higher percentage of of the high quality base oils versus other other people. You know, like like you'd mentioned earlier, a blend mm -hmm. is is what's in our synthetic a blend between a group three and a group four. And, and nobody's then, nobody's putting a group four blend into the group threes. Yeah, that's just like create group four just to. But that's what we do. We want yeah. we want to make sure it's a very robust package. Yeah, and then the FR three on on top of it. You know, that gets you your fuel economy and your additional wear protection. Kills unicorns, though. It does kill unicorns. So we're going to run out of unicorns. We're going to run out of unicorns here pretty <laughs> soon. Yeah. So uh, uh, let's, give away, let's give away some T-shirts today, right? Yeah. They're giving good. away some online, Levi. Before you give them all away, let me give one some away, right? All right. Let me let's see. Bearded Medic, you, you, you're always on here, and you opened up good. So Bearded Medic, you get a T-shirt. Um... James Bruce, <laughs> you're off suspension. I guess we owed you a t-shirt we didn't give you. So, James, you're getting a t-shirt. And we will be fat man friendly, as you say. So, shoot us a message, and we will uh, get one out to you. And how about Mark Cowles? Shoot us a message, private message on Facebook, uh, on our page there. Let us know what size you want. Give us your address. We'll shoot you guys out some some gear. Remember, we got the new gear on the website now. We got some new T-shirt designs out there, so feel free to jump on there and uh, uh, grab some of the new T-shirts. We're giving away free T-shirts with seventy-five dollar orders. No coupon code or anything, right, Levi? Just if you if you place an order that's seventy-five bucks, uh, put your size on there on, on the note section, and we'll get a T-shirt out to you. Don't forget to subscribe to our email newsletter uh, for exclusive deals and updates. Like and follow our Facebook page if you haven't already. And again, shout out to the USMC Racing yeah. guys. Uh, <laughs> love the video. We're going to post it on our Facebook page. Uh, please like and share the video. These guys are a, a great group of guys that are doing a really cool thing. Good luck to you guys down there at the race this weekend. Kick some butt. Um, and, and, and I hope our Hot Shots uh, family out there can, can help and share what they're doing. So uh, we'll post the video up and let, let's help, help get it out there. I think it was, it was really fun what they did. And we're looking to support them all season. So good luck this weekend, guys. And and uh, we'll we'll report next week how they did and uh, yeah, and get a little little behind the scenes. Maybe maybe we'll do a call and interview with them next week. Yeah, that'd be interesting. We haven't done that yet. We haven't. No. Did, oh, Levi's like, oh no, more technical <laughs> stuff. Hey, we pulled off a live video, <laughs> Levi. We could do it. So, anything else you want to say? No, nope, just ready to sign off. I think. All right. Well, you know, and remember, if you're down there in Louisville, swing by the Matt Show. Say hi to the guys down there. Uh, otherwise, we will uh, see you guys next week. Have a good weekend. Yep. Yep. Kevin's out. <laughs>